This is an EMG machine. It assesses the health of the muscles and the nerve cells that control them. Why is that important? I'm sure you've seen other fitness YouTubers cite case studies just like this one that shows you get more pectoralis major activation from a dumbbell press than you do with a barbell press. That's a big difference. Barbell, dumbbell. Well, this is the exact device they use to test that. The problem I have with a lot of those studies are the participants. You ask the average gym goer to flex their bicep and it looks like they had a stroke. They flex that entire side of their body. Also, I have a different view on hypertrophy. I feel like you get the best results when you isolate down to whatever's biomechanically possible to the exact muscle you're trying to work. Meaning that I'll tweak the form of an exercise and attempt to more so bias that specific muscle, sometimes all the way down to the individual head. This machine will tell us if that's actually possible or if it turns out I'm full of shit. Spoiler alert, it's like 50-50. What I didn't realize when I bought this expensive bastard is I'd not only be able to test which exercises are best in terms of muscle activation, but also which ones are better at isolating, when you should actually use machines over free weights, or if you have a secondary muscle that constantly jumps in, say you're training chest and you always feel your shoulders, exactly how to fix that, and surprisingly, be able to call bullshit on things like Things like, like plate presses. I've seen a lot of people talk shit about this one, which I understand on the surface, doesn't make sense. Your chest is already in a shortened position. The force of gravity is pulling more on your anterior delts than anything else. And before I'd argue with some sort of anecdotal information or have you curl up your bicep to show you that even though it's in a fully contracted position, if you lift your elbow, it's gonna create even more intense contraction. And whether that's because those proximal fibers closest to where that muscle originates or shortening even more or whatever the hell the reason is, I don't know. Now I don't have to, I can just literally show you this is a great exercise. Now, is it something you should center your entire chest training around? No, but if you're somebody that has a hard time connecting with your chest, it's not a bad exercise, especially when you see how much activation you get out of that chest in comparison to that anterior delt. And I wasn't joking, this is an expensive bastard. This machine, 14,000. To use it, I had to buy a fucking Dell from Costco. And this thing, well, I didn't really need this thing, but I fancy myself a bit of an artist. Now, I did find a potential huge flaw with this machine and why I don't trust just any chode to use it. And it goes back to something I've said several times on here, your muscle can't count. It has no clue how much weight you're lifting. For instance, I can curl something ungodly heavy, like 60 pounds, and I should be able to get the same muscle activation and motor neuron recruitment if I only curl half the weight. And, and that's exactly what happened. It didn't matter if I did one rep or several sets, didn't matter how long I rested in between, they kept in pace with each other the entire time. The lesson here for me is that they both work. If your body still allows you to lift heavy weight without getting injured seemingly every single week, then you're gonna have an easy time putting enough stress in that muscle to elicit growth. But the caveat being, you need to be able to isolate down to that muscle as much as possible because there is a point of diminishing returns. It's when you're flexing everything from your bicep to your sphincter. The same goes for lifting lighter weight. You can get the same stimulus, but the caveat is you have to focus on flexing the muscle and making that weight feel heavy. And that can be something as simple as slowing down the movement. If you can do that, you can grow just as much. Now back to the bro exercise that everyone hates, the plate press, because it actually gave me some insights on how to help people who every time they train chest, those anterior delts blow the hell up. The moment you set that bench up, even on a slight incline, those anterior delts have no choice, they have to get involved. Even at that weird 10 degree angle that some benches can do, it doesn't matter. They start to engage and it only gets worse as the angle increases. So if you're someone with dominant anterior delts, I would start your chest workout with decline movements. Whether that's dumbbells or your Jerry Riga Smith machine, it doesn't matter. It's just the angle and the position to put your shoulders in give you the best chest to delt muscle activation ratio. From there, I'd move on to flat movements, which are still great, but you're gonna start to see those delts fire a little bit more and try to take over. And before you say big deal, I still need to target my upper pecs. How am I gonna do that? There is one movement that biases the pecs over the delts, even on the steepest of inclines. It's that bro coffin press. Now, am I saying to get rid of incline movements altogether? No, fuck stick. Start with your decline movements, move into flat, then hit some coffin presses on an incline to really connect with, push a ton of blood, and make sure you engage that chest first, then hit your incline. At that point, they'll be less likely to fuck up your life. Now, there were some things I knew in my heart to be true, and it turned out my heart's a big, fat fucking liar. For instance, we've all heard that doing close grip bicep curls is gonna put more emphasis on the long head, a wide grip will hit more short head. The good news is it's fairly true with the short head, but when you go close grip, 
It jumps right over your long head and hits your fucking brachialis. But even that goes out the window when you lift above a certain amount of weight, all your bicep muscles say screw it and jump in. And it was at this moment I had that same feeling I had when I was a kid when I realized that all my mom's male friends weren't just friends, they were best friends. That's when I decided to test incline curls because that had to be it. Your arm's back in a stretched position, long head's more stretched than your short head, shoulder's out of it. Complete garbage. The damn thing hit more brachialis. The only exercise I found that actually got more activation out of the long head more than anything else is when I internally rotated my shoulders so far that it looked like that time I beat the shit out of those special needs kids in Twister. Now, during the process of learning how to use this machine correctly, I had to go through hours of in-person training, tons of online tutorials, and during that, I actually found a piece of information that's gonna be even more valuable than anything else you've learned today. Charizard, setting your balls on fire and getting them put out by vaginal juice whilst singing the Pokemon theme song. Now there's so much information here, this could get out of hand. This could end up being an hour video. Nobody wants that. But if enough people like this video and get some traction, I could do a whole series breaking down each individual body part. Comment below if you're interested. Otherwise, I just bought some expensive ass nipple clamps. But we do have to talk about what I found in terms of rear delts because it's amazing and frustrating. Now the goal with these tests were to see which movements were best in terms of targeting those rear delts and minimizing trap involvement because this is a common complaint I hear and I see it a lot. When I go to the gym, there's a lot of guys who just look like they left their posterior delts at home. When it comes to machine rear delt flies, you'll be happy to learn that traditional ones you do with a pronated grip are low key crap in terms of how much activation you get out of that rear delt in comparison to your trap. The only way to really target those rear delts without your trap screwing everything up is grabbing nice and high on the outside of the machine, just like they intended you not to do. If you've ever set up to do bent over rear delt flies and you weren't sure which grip to take, a neutral or a pronated grip, Turns out they both suck. But you can save them by wrapping that dumbbell around your body towards your hip or taking a fully pronated grip and pulling straight back. Both of those movements have a great delta trap activation ratio. Lastly, cables. And the thing I learned here is that any movement you do up high gets a marginal amount of activation out of that rear delt at best. The best thing you can do is drop that cable down to hip height and do what I call rotations or some people call W's. So does that mean I'm gonna change the way I train? Well, somewhat, but more than anything, it means that I gotta do a lot more testing. So again, if you're interested, comment below. And if you need to put on more muscle, programs are linked below, especially the new Full Gym 2.0, even though that some of the things I teach in that go against everything I said today, but anybody who's taken the program will tell you it fucking works. But that's probably because it's so intense that it kills one out of every seven people that take it.